Hey YouTubers, okay, in a previous video I had showed an oscilloscope shot and I would say I would explain uh, what that was better in detail. So that's, that's what we're going to be doing right now is uh, explaining what is actually going on uh, inside of our generator coil during a coil short. Okay, but first, before that, um, I want to say here that uh, I found this uh, on the internet. Only one instance of this I could find, and I don't know what it is exactly or where it came from. Uh, I have a feeling it might have come from uh, one of Nikola, Nikola Tesla's lectures, and it looks like apparently uh, this is a solid state means of uh, creating a coil short uh, by using this little make and break device right here and he's doing the same thing uh, primary through which high frequency discharges are passed right here and then he's, he's shorting the coil out and as, like I said this is the only instance uh, I have found this uh, image but anyways back to this okay <clears throat> um, when we short a coil out, okay, now I got to make this known too, is that uh, I originally, or initially I thought that this was just a collapsing field right here. And uh, the reason I thought that was that when you short a coil out from end to end, let's say with a, a simple switch, Okay, there's there's hardly any resistance really, if any at all, inside of that switch. So it, it that represents like the biggest possible load you can put on our generator coil, and so because of that, um, that causes the largest amount of uh, current to flow, and as a result of that, there's a huge opposing magnetic field caused from Lenz's law. Uh, that's developed around uh, this generator coil and so when you briefly short it when you close it and then open it uh, you're actually collapsing that opposing magnetic field and then getting a voltage spike out of it to charge your capacitor but that's not right that's incorrect um, that's not true and you know some of you out there I think that uh, that might think this as well and it's uh, that's not right and this is why uh, when we look at our oscilloscope shot here of what is uh, happening during a coil short here is our normal generated power right here okay and so these are the shorts right here that we're only doing for a brief moment of time so really we're just uh, we're just getting a tiny little section of our uh, uh, generated power at the voltage peaks so these are the voltage peaks and uh, so let's say this is a negative voltage peak and then this is a positive voltage peak and so this is the rotor magnetic field approaching our conducting generated coil and then moving away from it and then approaching it and moving away from it and so we only want to short it at the voltage peaks and so what's happening inside of our coil is that causes a, uh, a high frequency vibrational energy uh, ringing effect uh, to happen inside of our coil so it's, it's vibrating back and forth uh, very rapidly um, inside there so that's that's actually what is happening and uh, and so there is a lot of power there and it's in the form of voltage and amperage and wattage uh, as I showed in the previous video it's a lot more power there than what the normal generated power is supplying a lot more up to twice over twice the amount and we're only using a brief amount of our generated power here at the voltage peaks to do that to create this ringing effect inside of the coil so it's an actual 
AC uh, alternating current vibrating uh, back and forth uh, when we open and release our short. Uh, so um, it's not just one collapsing field. It's uh, more likely to be many collapsing fields happening uh, one after another with expanding fields in between because it's alternating. It's probably most likely collapsing and then expanding, collapsing, expanding, etc. Um, get a sip of coffee right here real fast. Ah, uh, yeah. Just like that. Um, so that's what's happening. Um, and it's, that's a lot of power coming out right there. And because we're only shorting that for just a brief moment in time, uh, the opposing, whatever opposing fields, uh, expanding or collapsing, it's probably neutralizing since it's both, doesn't have any real adverse reactions to the rotor and the, the load down the rotor. So our rotor, you know, doesn't slow down. So we're not, we're not eliminating the, the lens's law, opposing fields that normally load down the rotor, but we're simply uh, avoiding most of it through this brief shorting at the voltage peaks and so it doesn't you know they, they don't have enough time to like affect the rotor to load it down so the rotor never feels it and in this in this way we can like get out a lot of energy uh, in our generator coil and continuously get it out because this is this is over unity energy in the form of amperage current and volts or wattage it's it's power real actual power and a lot of it and if it was just a collapsing magnetic field a one-off event then it wouldn't show up in the charging of a capacitor because a, a normal collapsing field is only like maybe 80 84 percent depending on how well you, you know you've tuned everything about 84 percent of your you know total energy uh, and it, you know this is like you know at least 200 percent I mean it, it it's more than what the generated power is uh, supplying and the advantage is uh, we can get that out continuously uh, while avoiding the Linda's law opposing fields um, so that's what's going on uh, inside of our uh, coil here. Is it's actually uh, a vibrational energy uh, that's ringing um, back and forth in an uh, alternating current uh, style uh, fashion. Um, let's see what else? What am I missing here? Um, I think I've covered everything. Um, the main thing is that it's it's vibrational energy and now the theory uh, I, I, I still don't know exactly why it's that's even occurring right here um, or why this energy is actually more than the supply generated power from our rotating magnetic fields um, one theory is that this is a high frequency AC going on here at the voltage peaks during the brief shorting and because of that that's kind of like saying what well, you're inserting a tiny little rotor in there a little high-speed rotor uh, that's generating more power but that doesn't make any sense because why would there be any more power than what we're already generating normally from the magnets see what I mean so where exactly is all this extra energy that can be up to twice the amount of the generated power coming from so one explanation would be like possibly the zero point energy field which is a, a field of pure potential um, but uh, the high frequency is uh, somehow it's bypassing any kind of resistance uh, in the coil and could possibly be happening faster than the speed of light um, and so because of that it grabs extra energy and power from the zero point energy field because where else is it going to be coming from how is it more uh, above the 100 percent 
of the generated available power that we already have. How is it doing that? You know, it does fill capacitors up to many times the voltage level of what of what the normal generated power voltage would be. Uh, sometimes in an even less amount of time. So that's obviously more volts, amperages, and uh, you know watts contained in this vibrational energy here, this uh, ringing effect. So uh, I think that's uh, pretty much everything. I hope I got everything in there. Um, I try to make these videos as short as possible, but it, it's really hard to do. It's a lot of information. So I hope that makes sense. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.